Okay, so the chapter is current electricity. The current I is the is due to the flow of the charges, and the charge is carried by the electrons. Now the charge of the one electron is fixed, which is equal to one point six into ten power minus nineteen coulomb, and it is represented by E small e mean elementary charge. So the total charge. is equal to n e where n is the number of electrons and e is the charge of an electron so the charge q is equal to n e so the electric current is the rate of flow of charges in a conductor so i current is equal to q divided by t q meyer in coulomb time in second so q is equal to i t I ampere T second, both are the basic physical quantities. Both base units ampere second, and this charge derived. So this is SI unit of the charge coulomb. Now I is equal to N E over T E constant. So I current directly proportional to N divided by T, which is called rate of flow of electrons. so when current i is plotted against n divided by t the graph is a straight line passing through the region with the gradient e which is constant now i is equal to n e over t so n divided by t can be determined by dividing this e over i mean the current divided by charge of an electron this is the number of electrons flowing per unit time mean the rate of flow of electrons and it is meyer in second power minus 1 because number has no unit and time second now suppose this is a wire it's a conductor it has many free electrons in it and the number of the free electrons suppose n its cross sectional area is a and this segment has length l now the number of the free electrons per unit volume of the wire conductor is called number density so we can write the total number of the free electrons is equal to number density multiplied by volume where the number density times area into height because area is a and the height means the length is a so the total number of free electrons in a conductor can be determined by nal if the number density is given now when this is substituted in the equation i is equal to n e over t then i is equal to n is the number density al into e divided by t so i is equal to number density area e is the charge we can write q multiply by l divided by t and the l is the distance covered by the electron t is the time taken so we can write l divided by t equal to speed so i is equal to number density a q v and this v is called the drift velocity of the electron and it is equal to i divided by n q a this is the drift speed drift velocity okay now this wire has number of the free electrons but we have to flow them because the rate of flow of charges will cause the current so to flow them right to produce the current the wire must be connected with a battery now the purpose of the battery is it does work on the charges to move them right so the work done per unit charge to move it in the circuit in the wire in the conductor is called electric potential 
So the battery is doing the work on the charges, on the electron to move them, so they will be converted into the current. So the, when the work is done per unit charge, to move it in the circuit is called electric potential. So electric potential is represented by capital V. It is equal to work divided by charge. Now the work is mired in joule charge in coulomb and joule per coulomb is volt. So when one joule work, when one joule work is required between two points, suppose P to Q to move one coulomb charge, then the electric potential between P and Q is one volt. Now, this work is energy. So V is equal to energy divided by charge. So what is the purpose of the battery? The battery supplies energy to the charges. So energy supplied per unit charge by the source of the electricity, mean by the battery, is called electromotive force. So electromotive force is the type of the electric potential. So EMF mean the energy supplied per unit charge by the source of the electricity by the battery is called EMF and EMF is also measured in volt. But when the charge passes through the resistor, it dissipates, it delivers some energy. So energy delivered per unit charge across the resistor is called voltage. This is another type of the electric potential. So both EMF and the voltage are the electric potential. One purpose is energy supplied and other energy output, energy delivered across the resistor. So definitely input physical quantity is always greater than the output. Hence, EMF of the circuit is always greater than voltage. So the EMF is equal to last potential plus voltage. So the EMF supplied by the battery is lost due to the internal resistance of the circuit. And this output voltage is the, yes, output energy per unit charge. So the electric potential is the work done per unit charge to move it in the circuit. V is equal to W by Q. It is measured in volt. It is scalar physical quantity, work scalar, charge scalar. Now, energy supplied, because the work is energy, so energy supplied per unit charge by the battery is called EMF. And energy delivered per unit charge across the resistor as output is voltage. So input is always greater than output. So the EMF is greater than voltage because some of the potential is lost. Now, if work is energy, then electric potential is equal to energy divided by charge and the charge is any. Now in this equation, this E is constant. So when the graph is plotted between potential and E over N, and E over N mean the energy carried by one electron. Right, then the graph will be straight line passing to the region and the gradient of the graph will be one over E. 
mean electric potential is directly proportional to E by N, mean more potential, more EMF, more voltage, mean energy carried by each electron is large. So the V directly proportional to E divided by N. Now, during delivering EMF, some of the potential is lost in the cell in the battery. So the EMF minus lost potential in the cell is called terminal potential. So this terminal potential TP is also called voltage, mean the potential supplied to the outer circuit. Mm -hmm. 